Hey man, how are y'all doing today? It is great to see you. I'm so looking forward to this week's. Why is that, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. Yes, indeed I am. Jubilee 2021 is coming up at the end of this week. Today is Sunday. So this coming Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Yes, indeed. Jubilee 2021. Looking forward to it. Let me just say this right here. Got the little shofar here. And on Thursday night, we're going to give this thing the best of a blast as I possibly can. I am no musician. I, I, I'm not good at all. But uh, we're going to get whatever we can out of the sound of this here so far and open up the Jubilee. We are looking forward to it. Now, we're not going to be doing it here. No, we praise the Lord. We're going to be meeting over at the Old Fashioned Missionary Baptist Church there in Gary, Indiana. Uh, Pastor Ray Tucker is allowing us to meet over there, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, who's going to be preaching? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, that'll be myself, Pastor Ray Tucker, and Brother Tim Moore. Uh, we will be doing the preaching, two of us each night during those uh, three nights there. So it'll be, uh, we'll rotate through so you don't have to listen to one of us all three nights. <laughs> Amen. People will be excited about that. Uh, we are also going to be taking up an offering each night. So if you're there in person, uh, it's not going toward Garage Baptist. No, it is going to help out with the NIPSCO bill uh, for Old Fashioned since they are so kind to open up the doors to allow us to have the services there. We will, of course, be live streaming here on our Facebook page. And then once it gets recorded, we'll get it transferred over there to our YouTube channel as well, uh, of which we've got a couple of new videos there up on the YouTube channel. Go check them out, amen. Trying to keep them short so as that uh, uh, you can listen to it real quick and move on with your life, amen. Uh, but don't forget, uh, anyways, Jubilee will start at 6 p.m. each night, amen. So let's go ahead and open up here in a word of prayer. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we do thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We do Pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day and upon the service here. Help us, Father, please, to present the service and especially the sermon the way that you'd have for us to, that it would be a help to each and every one that is listening. And if there's anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they would make today that glorious day that they ask him to save them. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon the Jubilee and upon each and every one who is volunteering to help out with that. Help us, Father, please, to... Uh, Go through there and, and deliver these services the way that you have for us too, so that we can truly experience Jubilee. And while it's on my mind, we do ask you, Father, for the Haywoods in this uh, time of loss. Grandma Sue having gotten her final promotion there to heaven. Uh, and the upcoming memorial service that will be taking place here soon. Uh, do pray, Lord, for the strength and comfort and love for each and every one of them, Lord. And uh, help us, Father, please, to, to do our best to bring that, the, the comfort that we can. But uh, we do thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. Pray, Lord, for Henry Allen and Wesley Poston, uh, my cousin Adam, and myself, and, and all those with uh, different ailments and, and illnesses and whatnot. Ask your father for Uncle Dougie as they are uh, working on him with it, um, stage four kidney failure. Be able to get that uh, sorted out there for him. But we do thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. And yeah, while it comes to mind, uh, Miss Bonnie's neighbor, Roger, and uh, the dementia he's going through there, pray, Lord, for him and his wife as they're uh, battling this together, that all the correct decisions will be made for him. Also for mom and dad with uh, dad's dementia as well. But we thank you, God, for loving us and saving us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> well, how about this? Nice little song here. It simply says, we have heard the joyful sound. Amen. It ain't a mournful sound. No, 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 no. It's a joyful sound. Yes. Which by nature means it's better than my croaking bullfrog impersonations. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves, onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, 
by his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing it softly through the gloom. Who in the heart for mercy craves, sing in triumph o'er the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen, amen. Here's a little bit of victory for us today. We're heavenward bound. If, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and if you don't, today would be an excellent day to put your full faith and trust in Him and acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner, that you are bound for hell, that you need Jesus to save you. Because He's promised, whosoever shall call upon His name shall be saved. Amen. <clears throat> Heavenward bound. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now's at stake. Humble your hearts to God, safe from a chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians awake. And Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, and trumps will sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies. Going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be your happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Homeward we then shall fly, glory to share. And Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, and trumps will sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Hey, man, hallelujah. Praise the Lord for what he has done and what he is going to do. Hey, man. All right. I'd like to take your Bibles, if you would, please. And go with us over to the book of Leviticus, chapter number 25. As we said last week, we're going to be uh, doing two sermons on the Jubilee, leading up to our Jubilee 2021, amen. Uh, we are certainly looking forward to that. And uh, today we're going to be dealing with the trumpet of the Jubilee, amen. So Leviticus, chapter number 25. And the Bible says this in verse number 9. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Amen. Lord being our helper, as I said, we want to bring our sermon today on the trumpet of the Jubilee. And I believe that we're going to find that there's more to it than just that. So let's have a quick word of prayer. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, wonderful, merciful Father, we do thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything that is in your word, that it's there to be some sort of help to us whether it's to teach us what not to do or to teach us what to do, that there is such deep and rich meaning throughout your whole word, that there is so much there that we'll never be able to learn it all here in this life, no. But you've got it all there for us if we'll just make the effort. We thank you, Father. 
We thank you, Lord, for all that you did. We thank you, God, for all that Christ did there on the cross of Calvary to purchase our salvation. Even though, <laughs> hey, I'm living proof. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve any of it. I just deserve hell. But you love me anyways. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We pray, Lord, for all the prayer requests, but made known and the unspoken, that you please take care of them as you see fit. And we do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon the sermon here. And help me, Lord, please, to, to say what needs to be said, nothing more, nothing less. And I ask you, Father, please forgive me of my sins and help me, Lord, to follow after you. Thank you, God, for each and every one who's tuned in to these broadcasts, whether it be live or, or recorded down the line, whatever the case is, Father. And help each and every one of us to hear what you've got for us today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. So, I actually had planned on going in a different direction for uh, the second sermon here on the Jubilee today. And, and as I was uh, listening to some of the other... Uh, uh, sermons that have been recorded on the Jubilee. Uh, I had this one particular thought that struck me. And this was something that I really wanted to get in and, and do a little bit of investigation on. I, it thrilled me, the prospect of it. And, and so I, I sat down and I began to, to study on, on this notion uh, of what the, the trumpet here means as far as the Jubilee goes. And, and one thing I found out for sure, that when it came to the, the trumpets here, uh, it wasn't used for entertainment purposes. You know, they, you're not going to sit in there and grab that shofar and, and uh, be able to play any music on it. Not even Mary Had a Little Lamb, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, not happening there. Uh, now, of course, the Bible does say there in Psalm 150, we're supposed to be uh, praising with the trumpets and such. And we certainly see that many times here in God's word. Uh, but God established uh, very early on here that when he was wanting the trumpet to be employed, uh, there was something going on very uh, specifically. Certainly, praising God is very specific. Don't don't misunderstand me there. Uh, but again, it goes back to the idea that it's not for entertainment value. See, the very first time that we even see a trumpet here going from Genesis through Revelation, uh, a trumpet being used is there in the book of Exodus when God first tells Moses, say, look, uh, in three days, I'm going to arrive here on Mount Sinai. And we're going to call the assembly together. And, and you're going to know to call the assembly together. And of course, all this is paraphrased. Uh, by, by the sound of the trumpet. And, and with an estimated one to two million people, plus all of the uh, uh, foreigners that were mixed in with the crowd who also left Egypt there, it wasn't that Moses was going to be able to grab his trumpet and, and give a toot on it and everybody was going to hear. This was going to have to be something otherworldly. And so God blasted the trumpet there to announce his arrival on Mount Sinai for the people to gather together here. God established that the trumpet was to be used uh, to mark the solemn feast days that were going to be taking place, to uh, mark new moons that were taking place. They, they were to celebrate the new moons. And, and when they were to make a sacrifice of peace offerings, the trumpet was to be sounded. Uh, the trumpet was, there, there was a trumpet that was to be used to uh, call an assembly of the people. A trumpet to be sounded to call the soldiers together to warn of the impending danger, the impending battle to take place. And please don't misunderstand me. I, I, I frail human words here at the moment. But the trumpet was to be blasted to request God to come help his people to win the battle. Not that God needed the trumpet. You know, oh, oh, you're sounding the battle. Oh, oh, I see you, you, you've got a battle going on there. I, I will come help. No, it was 
almost to announce the arrival of God at the battle for the enemies. <laughs> hey, Y'all about to be whooped and whooped good. The trumpet would be sounded to announce victory. And certainly that's part of our theme for Jubilee 2021, Jericho, the city of Palms, victory. Before they even uh, stormed Jericho there, before the walls even fell, they, they were to blow the trumpets to announce the victory. They hadn't even gotten it yet, and yet they're announcing that they've got the victory because God had promised it. They sounded the trumpets, the people shouted, the walls came tumbling down, and everyone went, went straight forward and did what they were told to do. Of course, trumpets were sounded when the king, new king was coronated. God also established that there was a feast of trumpets that was to take place. But perhaps the most special of all was the trumpet of the Jubilee. The whole releasing, the, the getting back what had been surrendered, uh, the reclaiming of freedom, of liberty, to get your lands back, to have your debt wiped away. It's what the Jubilee meant. You can listen to some of our other sermons there on the Jubilee. I uh, got them there on sermonaudio.com and in last week's and such. Get a little better idea about that. But as we look here at this trumpet of the Jubilee, I believe it transcends just being for the Jubilee that there are other uh, ways to look at this trumpet of the Jubilee, to look at this trumpet of the Lord that is being sounded here, to see what else God has got specifically in regards to this particular trumpet. May I say that we see here in our text, it is the sound of Jubilee. I'm sorry, the sound of joy, this trumpet of the Jubilee. Uh, as you note there at the beginning of verse 9, Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement. The day of atonement, of course, was when uh, the priest would go, the high priest would go in with the blood of, of the lamb, the Passover lamb, and place it there upon the mercy seat. And the sins of the people would be rolled back for another year. The sin debt would just keep getting rolled back and back and back until finally Jesus died there on the cross of Calvary, the final sacrifice, the only sacrifice that would stand. So they were to blow the trumpet of the Jubilee on that day. Now the uh, the very word Jubilee, uh, Strong's defines it as an acclamation of joy. Now, as you all know by now, I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree. And I certainly want to have better understanding. So uh, beyond just looking up the word Jubilee, I looked up the word acclamation. Because I've heard it in songs and whatnot. I want to know what it was for sure. An acclamation means a loud shout or other demonstration of welcome, goodwill, or approval. So we've got this joy that is being broadcasted here today. With this sounding of the trumpet of the Jubilee. This is something that is wonderful that is taking place here. Dare I say there's no fighting going on. Grudges have been left behind. The sin debt wiped out. Property returned. People restored to their families. So on and so forth there. This is a time of celebration that is taking place here. Getting back what rightfully belongs to you. That's pretty good. <laughs> I would love to have all my credit card bills wiped out so as that what I get from my paycheck actually is mine again instead of belonging to those companies. That'd be awesome. I, I think I'd dance a jig over that one. Hey, man. I definitely could sound the joy over that. No wonder so many people, when they pay off their mortgages, they'll, they'll take and have themselves a little bonfire and burn the mortgage paperwork. It's paid off. 
Done. <laughs> They're happy about it. That's the trumpet of the Jubilee. It's the sound of joy. And it is wonderful in our eyes. But mm, it's not all just about us, church. No, 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 no. Uh, let me turn over to Psalm 47 here real quickly for you. Because I want to show you that the trumpet of the Jubilee is also a shout of the just. There's only nine verses here, and I want to read all nine of them for you. Psalm 47 says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. Now, that word terrible means that we're supposed to have reverential fear for him. Not that he's a bad thing. No, 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 no. He's a great thing. But to those who don't know him, mm, oh, yeah, he, he's terrible. He, he's something dreadful there. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us. Remember, you're, you're God's people or you're not. You are saved or you are lost in the subject. And the nations under our feet. Uh, feet are a symbol. You know, you've got the shoes that go on your feet. That's a symbol of authority. If they're under your feet, that means you've got the authority over them. You've got the rule over them. Uh, you've got the power. Well, we've got the power through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Verse 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. That word seal is a musical pause. It means stop and think about this for a moment. Look what God has done for you thus far. <laughs> it ain't even a matter of all that he's done for you. It's just a matter of what he's done so far for you. That can blow our minds if we'll stop. As the song says, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. If you sit down and you actually manage to count all of your blessings. You know what that means? You still have blessings still to come because you're still alive and you may have been done counting, but you ain't done counting the future blessings yet. Amen. Now, verse 5. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, not some of the earth. Ooh, thank God. You know, just because they, he has chosen Israel and where Israel is planted, he's not just the God there. Remember, they tried that nonsense back there. And I uh, want to say it's over there in 2 Kings. I could be wrong. Uh, the uh, armies of the enemy came up against the Israel there, and, and they lost as well. Hey, their God is the God of the mountains, but he ain't the God of the valleys. And God comes along and says, <laughs> you want to bet I am the God of all of the earth. There ain't a place you can go on this planet where God is not the God of. There ain't a place in this universe that you can go that God is not the God of because God is the God of all of creation. Amen. Where were we? Oh yeah, verse 7. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Get it, church. He is the God. End of subject. God reigneth over the heathen. Mm -hmm. So even though they, they out there, they're acting like a bunch of fools and, and, and trying to drive us crazy, trying to lead us off into sin, God's still their God. Whether they want him or not, whether they acknowledge him or not, whether they believe in him or not, it don't matter. He's still the God. He is God of gods. He king of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together. Even the people of the God of Abraham. Don't forget he is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. See that trumpet of the jubilee that got sounded there? Verse number 5 is the shout of the just. God is the just. He is the sovereign creator of heaven and earth. Every time you see the word God, it is, is it written there. It is the Hebrew word El Ohim. El meaning God. Ohim meaning more than two. So we know we've got God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. A triune God. 
He is just. Isaiah recorded there in Isaiah chapter number 6 that the angels were flying around God singing holy, holy, holy because he is thrice holy. If he is that holy, then he is the just. Amen. And God fights for his people. We are to be sitting here serving him, doing what he would have for us to do. But he's going to defend his people. When the enemy comes on the attack, God's going to be there with our back. When the enemy comes to accuse, God says, well, all I see is the blood. Amen. If we are saved, blood-bought, born again, we know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, then we are under the blood. Don't matter what charges of my past that Satan wants to bring along. God says, all I see is the blood of my son. Innocent, he's gone free. <laughs> but if you're lost, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you can't say with 100% certainly at this very moment, if you close your eyes in death, you would open them in heaven, then you're part of the heathen. And you are part of the unjust that God will judge. It is appointed unto man once to die, the Bible says, but after this the judgment. Those who are saved, blood-bought, born again, will face the judgment seat of Christ, where we will be judged based on our service for him. Those who die lost will face the great white throne of judgment one day. Where they will be shown all of their sin. Where they will be shown all of their times that they could have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And still rejected his call. And from there they will be cast into everlasting fire. In the lake of fire. Where they will burn body, soul, and spirit for all of eternity. Dying the unjust death that they deserve, that we all deserve, but for Jesus and what he did there on the cross of Calvary. That trumpet of the Jubilee is a shout of the just. Follow him or don't follow him. See heaven one day, split hell wide open one day. Choice is up to us. Building off of that, may I say, as the book of Zechariah chapter number 9 reveals, that it is not only the sound of joy, not only the shout of the just, but it is also the signal of jeopardy. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 14 to 16, the Bible records this. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour, and subdue with sling stones. And they shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls, and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. Preacher, what in the world are you talking about? I'm so glad you asked that question. Oh, yeah. See, this ain't talking about the here and now. Uh -uh. Not unless you're watching this uh, video at least seven years from the day it was recorded. Uh, because what it's talking about here is toward the end, the, the battle of Armageddon. The end of the Great Tribulation period. When the whole earth has come together as one to fight against tiny little Israel. To wipe them off the map. To finish them off once and for all. To finish what Hitler tried to do. To finish what Pharaoh tried to do with Moses back there in Egypt. To destroy God's people. 
Because even though the church is God's people, let me tell you something. The rapture takes place and then there will be the seven years of the great tribulation period. The church ain't going to be here for that. And God is going to restart the clock and the end of the age of grace will have taken place. We're back there on Daniel's final week, the great tribulation week. And God is going to start that clock and it's going to look good for the first three and a half years. Everything's going to be peace, peace. And then all of a sudden it's going to all fall apart. And the world's going to start coming against Israel. And the Antichrist thinks he's going to be able to win. But God is going to sound the trumpet. It's going to signal the jeopardy that they are all in because they stood against his people. Israel is still his people. He may be divorced from them, but they are still his people. And what they think they've got going on for them, it's going to go 180 degrees. God's going to come with the sounding of that trumpet. Jesus is going to be riding upon his white charger coming back here. And with the sword that proceedeth out of his mouth, he's going to slay the enemy. He's going to defend Israel. And when all that's said and done, he's going to set up his millennial kingdom where he's going to rule and reign on this earth for 1,000 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those who will be alive during 1,000 years will be those who didn't accept the mark of the beast. Those who still stayed on Israel's side. But church... And I want to emphasize, but church, I already said something. Because before this signal of the jeopardy is sounded, <laughs> there's going to be another trumpet. And this is the one that, that really caught my attention about the trumpet of the Jubilee. And not only how it was blown, supposed to be blown there to start off the year of the Jubilee. Mm. but that it's going to be repeated one more glorious time here. Because it's going to be the song of the jamboree. So what's a jamboree? I'm glad you asked that too. See, that's a gathering of people from all over the place to come to one location. I was in Cub Scouts back in the 80s there, and I uh, never actually got to go to the Jamboree because my dad always had to work then. Uh, but the Jamboree, they Cub Scouts from all across the nation and some from across the globe would, would come and, and meet there at the campgrounds. There's going to be a song of a Jamboree taking place, church. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Some of you may have figured out I'd be going here eventually. You were right. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and yeah, just warning now, we're going to hit 1 Corinthians 15 real quick, too. Because <laughs> I likes this one. I hope you do, too. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Did you see that? We'll be caught up. The idea there is the rapture that will be taking place, and we'll be caught up together with them in the clouds. Those who are alive are going to be caught up together with those who had already died. They're going to have their bodies transformed and meet them in the air, and our bodies are going to be transformed and we're going to meet all of us together there and here and we're going to all be together in one location there in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ Amen! The jamboree will be sounded! Talk about a jubilee! The ultimate releasing, the ultimate liberty, the ultimate freedom! There ain't no more sin debt because there's no more sin. There ain't no more sorrow. There ain't no more pain. No more grief. No more crying over there. Because we're going to be happy, happy. It's going to always be howdy, howdy and never goodbye. It's going to be a glorious time taking place. 
when that trumpet sounds. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let me read this verse here real quickly to you. Y'all know it. You probably can quote it. I just want to make sure that I'm reading it correctly to you. 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 52. You know what? Back up to 51. I want to read that too. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Mm -mm, we're not all going to die. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Why not go ahead and read verse 54? So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Hey, man! The last trump shall sound. Now this is not the very last trumpet that will ever sound. Revelation chapter 11, if I'm remembering correctly, tells us about the seventh trumpet uh, that, of course, is talking about the seven trumpets of judgment that are going to be sounding there after the church has been raptured out of here and the seven years of the Great Tribulation period are taking place. It ain't that trumpet. I'm pre-trib. If you don't like being a pre-tribulation person, I'm sorry you want to go through the hell on earth of the Great Tribulation period. I'm pre-trib. I'm planning on being out of here before all of that nonsense starts. Hope you are too. So it ain't that trumpet getting sounded, church. Mm -mm. When it talks about the last trump. You see here, let me back up, reread verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, there are, was it, uh, blink 182, 182 twinkles that occur in the twinkling of an eye. That's how quickly, when you blink, 182 twinkles have just took place. That quickly, church. Twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpets to sound. And then, of course, you go back over there. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 talks about the dead. That You know what? Let me go back over there. I want to make sure that I'm saying this correctly to you. Amen. Don't ever want to be wrong about God's word. Amen. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Shout's taking place. There's the voice of the archangel. The twinkling of the eye takes place there. And we're that quickly we are being changed. And with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. The semicolon there simply change the thought. Same subject. He goes on to describe it. What is being described here with the last trump is simply saying at the end of this series of events, Christ beginning to descend to meet us halfway in the air. We the, There's the voice of the archangel. The trumpet sounds. And we are being raised. We gone. <laughs> we out of here, honey. We're hearing the song of the jamboree taking place. It's not entertainment, church. But it will be live, but it won't be Memrex. It's going to be Jesus and us going home for the ultimate jubilee taking place. The trumpet of this jubilee. That's glorious. That's wonderful. And I can't wait to hear it. But, church, there's only one way. Friends, those listening, who watching the videos, listening on Sermon Audio, YouTube, whatever. There's only one way you will hear this special trumpet of the Jubilee as Jesus steps out on a cloud of glory to rapture the church out. And that is if you truly 
have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you truly have put all of your faith and trust into Him, not into your church, not into your priest, not into your preacher, not into your money, not into your good works, not into your status, not into who your parents are, your grandparents, the good deeds you've done, but that you have put your full faith and trust into him. Because without him, you cannot be saved. How shall we escape so great a salvation? Or so great... How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I'll get it out in a moment, church. Don't neglect the salvation that he is offering to you today. My question is simply this. Have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? I can't answer for you. Only you can answer for yourself. But I hope that answer is yes. <clears throat> Abba Father, we do thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. We do pray, Lord, for your blessings upon this day. And help us, Father, please, to, to follow your holy will. I ask you, Lord, if there's anyone here in the sound of my voice who does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they won't keep making excuses, that they won't keep looking to anything and everything other than Jesus, but that they'll take the time right now to tell Jesus, I'm trusting fully in you and mean it, so that they too can be saved. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen and amen. I think we'll close with a song without him. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Jesus, oh Jesus, how do you know him today? You can't turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Without him, how lost I would be. Without him, I could be dying. Without him, I'd be enslaved. Without him, life would be hopeless. But with Jesus, thank God I'm saved. Jesus, oh Jesus, how do you know him today? You can't turn him away, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus, without him, how lost I would be. Without him, how lost I would be. Amen, amen. I thank you for your attention. May the good Lord go with you through the week. Don't forget, Jubilee 2021 is kicking off this Thursday at 6 p.m., uh, 3000 Calhoun Street there in Gary, Indiana, if you're able to show up there in person. If not, we will, of course, be broadcasting it here on our Facebook page, Dennis Sampson. And uh, later on, it will be uh, recorded and sent over to our YouTube channel, Dennis Sampson Digging in the Word Ministries. So you can check it out there as well. Amen. And if you get the chance to, and if you would, please uh, go on over there to the YouTube channel. Again, Dennis Sampson Ministries, I'm sorry, Dennis Sampson Digging in the Word Ministries, and uh, click the uh, uh, subscribe button and the notification button. I don't know why they're two separate buttons, but they are. Uh, click those, that way you don't have to go searching for our, our uh, channel there, 
and you'll be notified every time we do put up a video because uh, to be honest I deliberately do not post all the videos that I make on Facebook because uh, I am trying to drive people over there to YouTube uh, so that I can get a little bit of an idea as to what's going on and because there are a lot more people with access to YouTube than are willing to have Facebook accounts amen and who knows, maybe one day we'll even stop the Facebook account and just go straight over there. I don't know, uh, but we're going to follow the Lord's lead on that. Amen. So anyways, again, I thank you for your attention. And don't forget, if you've got church today, go to church. This is not your church. This is just supplemental. We're glad to be a help to anyone that we can. But make sure you go to church if you're able to. Thank you much.